Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the April 10th Community Development Committee meeting of the uh, Board of Commissioners up in Township. I'd like to start this meeting out with a uh, moment of silent meditation. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any announcements? There are no announcements. Thank you. Uh, let the record show that with us this evening is Commissioner McFatridge, Commissioner Spearing, uh, Sean Kilkenny, uh, the solicitor, uh, Jim Hirsch from Gilmore Associates, uh, Township Engineer, Assistant Township Manager, Randy Scheibel, and Code Enforcement Officer Paul Pertel, along with our Public Works Director, Dave Elsier. Any, um, the approval of the minutes? I have no questions on it. Any comments? Other commissioners, public, regarding the minutes from last month? Okay. Enter them into the record as they are. Um, Land Development Subdivision, no action items. Not this evening. Thank you, Paul. Uh, moving right into uh, our agenda. Request from Upper Moore Township School District for a waiver of permits and fees. Um, Paul, can you give us a rundown of what, what they intend to do? Uh, sure. It's, the school district is here, uh, but I can give an overview. Um, they, they are. They have uh, two projects they're proposing. One is a project at the uh, the middle school, and the other is a project at the um, at the high school in the woodshop. Yes. Um, wood, woodshop is uh, just some minor, very minor work they're doing there. The uh, middle school they're redoing the vestibule area, and making it more. Uh, uh, they're updating it. Um, Said, and they've requested a waiver of those permit fees. Uh, their facilities director is here this evening. Um, we want to come up and say hello. I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't realize the movie was here. How you doing, Andrew Greco? Um, yeah, just requesting the fees be waived. The middle school is going to be a new secure entrance, updating, removing the old glass with the cage in it because um, that's not up to code anymore. We have three spots that's being done, along with updating the office area to make it more closed and private. So this way, when people come to visit, they're not open to all the principal's offices. That's the middle school? That's the middle school. High school is putting up a wall to separate the wood shop into two separate rooms. One, child, one side's going to be engineering. The other side's going to be the wood shop. The wall is more so to keep the dust and wood chips and stuff out of the uh, okay. engineering area. OK. Would you mind? Uh sharing a couple other things he, uh, I know uh, we're very curious about um, you know the basin that's on the uh, on the property the the, the um, rain gardens yes at, at the, the middle school yes they're at the middle school do you uh, do you get involved in cleaning them out at all yeah or? I have my grounds guys every now and then we'll go in there and clean them out keep them I'm new to the role I started this past uh, past summer I started in August but yeah, my guys will be do as they do their normal maintenance. They'll be maintaining the rain gardens as well. I think you were here one of the times. Yes, yeah. for the ADA bathroom at the middle school. Yeah, right. Yes. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Not a problem. Uh, and uh, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, anybody have any questions? No, this is the normal thing we do. It's the same tax dollar uh, for the permit fee. I have no problem. Yeah. Yeah, we very much appreciate coming in beforehand. Not a problem. Big deal. Okay. Any other questions? All right, let's move this to for action. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. I guess we would just need a resolution from the solicitor's office. Okay. Uh, do you want just to include both projects or just in general? It'd be easy, just as easy to uh, put it on one. Don't you agree? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm fine with that. And also, this is pretty standard. We've done it in the past. Uh, it's just our actual cost. Um, involved or reimbursable from the school district and they, they've always been in agreement with that in the past so um, it's, it's our standard resolution or uh, showing standard re resolution for the uh, school district B under new business I lost my agenda on the computer um, a zoning changes consideration request for BT Blair LLC redevelopment property 2309 and 2317 Blair Mill Roads Uh, good evening, Matt McHugh, attorney for the property owner, BT Blair LLC. Um, this is, I believe we were back before you, this committee, a few months ago on a sketch plan for the executive muse redevelopment. Um, so that parcel or that property consists of three separate parcels right now. The larger parcel is zoned LI. The two smaller ones that front along Blair Mill Road uh, are zoned office. So we're going to, as part of the redevelopment, consolidate it into one basically 12-acre lot. And as a result, it'll be split zone. So one of you know standard planning goal is to have a single zoning classification across the entire property. So the first step in that process is asking for the rezoning today. So we'll have that LI classification across all three parcels. Um, currently, uh, is it a single parcel with, with different zone, three zones? Three parcels. The one large parcel is zoned LI. There's two smaller parcels closer to Blair yeah, Mill no, Road. I, I'm familiar with yeah. the property. I, I, how about ownership? Single ownership. Right now? Yep. One BT Blair LLC owns all three parcels. Okay. And uh, did the Muse have them before that, or did you guys buy that before uh, separately? They were all at the, purchased at the same time. Yeah, okay. Um, so... What risks do we have about combining these and making one separate zone? I, I don't necessarily see any risks. Do you, Paul? No, uh, if the board remembers, uh, a conditional use application was filed um, yeah. a m month or so ago, and then on review, um, I found the, the, um, the zoning line actually went through one of the uh, proposed uh, buildings. So we I talked to uh, Alex from our solicitor's office. Uh, we had a meeting with them and we recommended that they clean up the zoning, so to speak, uh, make it all zoning. Otherwise, they would need a, a slew of variances from the zoning hearing board if they did not change uh, the zoning at all. I live in industrial, so um, that's where we are. And the board seemed supportive of the project when they came in with a sketch presentation a few months back, so. Uh, Except for? the uh, application is not permitted in that zone li no the use is permitted by conditional use in the LI oh, oh okay, right okay yeah otherwise no we have we had three other ones yeah. yeah otherwise you'd have a project and you have different zoning classifications yeah. governing no. the same project and it you guys are right i i keep, i got confused about that. okay so that's uh so generally if if you're supportive of this project generally more housekeeping requests right right I, I got that right. same thing with a couple other applications we had recently right. where there was a, another like a residential zone and a commercial c2 zone uh and, and how you get cleaned up um
So say we wanted to talk about um, dedication of the ultimate right away on Blair Mill Road. Would that be part of the conditional use hearing or would that be something we talk about now? No, that would be uh, more appropriate for part of the conditional use hearing. Okay. Right now you're really dealing with uh, cleaning up the, the zoning designations, not even this per se, it'd be authorization to advertise to begin the process. Right? Correct. So, Correct. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a part of the township that we have had asked the APA to, to you know, take a serious look at as far as uh, applicable uses mm -hmm. for the area. And we've had a couple, as you know, other applications that are trying sure. to get the same thing. And you'll see the conditional, your ordinance for this type of use on a conditional use has a multitude of requirements. So yeah. uh, the township and Paul's perspective was get this cleaned up, put the conditional use on hold, Get this fixed and then come back in for the conditional use yeah. and we'll have a lengthy presentation on how we're going to meet all those requirements in the ordinance did we set a date for the conditional use uh no we, we when we just when i discovered the zoning issue we put the conditional use um hearing date on hold we did not advertise for it so, so we circled back um visited this and um so what we're asking is um if the committee will authorize the township solicitor's office to advertise uh, for a public hearing for the change of zoning, okay. possibly. Yeah, yeah, uh, correct. All about that, and we, we've done it plenty of times. Um, okay, uh, I have no objection. You have any other questions, or is there other, any other parcels we want to consider this with? I have none. I'll have a lot of things that gets conditional use in the yeah. other for parking, but other than that. For this now. Okay. Uh, anyone have any questions in the audience? Other commissioners? Exactly what we're doing and uh, where this parcel is. If not, we'll recommend it as a full board for action to. Uh, so, would you prefer us just do? You prefer go to the full board or uh, just for the motion? To well, you you could. You, yeah. Well, to you. I mean, I, I don't see this back again. Right? I, mean, I, I would recommend setting the um, authorizing the solicitor advertise for, I believe, it's the June 5th uh, board meeting. Right. Um, and then that's the action item for... For, for the, uh, that would be the public hearing for the change of zoning. Um, by but we have to vote on that in May. Jeremy, you don't have to, I don't, you don't have to vote to authorize a solicitor to advertise for the hearing. Um, no, to... Uh, it's up to you. If you like to move it to the full board to have them vote to authorize to advertise, or do you want to just have us do that now? It's up to you. Yeah, you can do it now. No, okay. I have any objections to that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be June 5th? Does that work for you? That, that's yeah, fine. Sir. Yep. Okay. So, but I'm asking you, official action item, right? Don't we normally vote on holding the, the hearing for the, for the zoning? Um, I think we yeah, normally do. You, know, you don't have to. Right. You don't have to. It's not required. Right. Um, but okay. If yeah. you want to, then that's fine. It's up to you. You can still. <laughs> always ask if they want to bother. No objections. All right. So it sounds like we're good. We're good. Less red tape. All right. Yeah, all about that. Okay. All right, Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay, so for this, pretty much the same question for this project right here, uh, zoning change consideration for townships municipal complex. Uh, is that just here or is that? Right, it, it's, um, it, it, it's, it's this parcel, um, it, it's the library. Um, Police station, everything on Center Avenue. The parcels behind us, we purchased that had single family dwellings on them. So in, in, in consultation with um, Alex Baumler from our solicitor's office, we wanted to clean everything up. Um, and our rec you know, the recommendation is that we rezone um, the entire, all the parcels, town TC1. 
So it's, it's really cleaning things up. So and this is anticipation of our um, building expansion and uh, addition project, uh, including the new police station, um, Associated Park, and so forth. So. Okay, I, I'm I'm not opposed to that at all. I have no problem. Uh, what kind of uh, so? Just carving out the parcel of township property. Are we TC one all the way up Eastern Road to Center Avenue? Yes. Okay, well then that's that works. That works. So what I'm looking for is just authorize my office to submit a change of zoning application to the uh, Montgomery County Planning Commission. I'll get some con uh, comments back from them, and once we do that, I mean we can. Do it on June 5th. We can do it on June 5th. We got plenty of time. Yeah. So. Good. Get it done. Any questions? Okay. Right. Moving right along. Old business. Request for a third amusement device at 714 Eastern Road. Um, this is the. Uh, gas station that went through the um yes it's the uh, conoco uh, gas station at easton and ellis um approximately six months ago the uh, property owner came in to the cdc uh, and then the full board asking for three machines within 300 feet of a residential zone uh, the board at that time granting them approval for two um, and then with wait six months to see if there was any issues with the third um, my office has not received any complaints um, chief block from the uh, police department has not received any complaints so w they would like to move forward with requesting the third amusement device um, as originally requested Um, I, I have no problem with that. I, I did uh, contact Chief Block after we had that armed robbery at the uh, other gas station up uh, North 611. And I wanted to know if these amusements were elevating our risk. And he did not feel that they were. So uh, I have no objection to this request and the fact that we haven't had any incidents. Okay, so we'll move that to the full board. Yeah. Good. Sure. I guess we need another resolution for this. Sure. Okay. Very good. And uh, our final item under new business, which really isn't that new. <laughs> uh, Carson Simpson's farm um, stream bank restoration project. Bids came in. Yes. Um, so we opened the bids for that project. If the board remembers, it was originally a condition of approval for the YMCA, which was then converted to a fee in lieu contribution from the YMCA. So we opened the bids on uh, the 27th of March. We got a total of eight bids. And the low bid is Site Preparations LLC in the amount of $98,662. Um, we've, we've checked references for site preparations and feel confident that they can uh, complete the work. So we would recommend that the board uh, award to site prep. Okay. Um, do we have a time frame for that? Uh, anticipate time frame for construction? Yeah, we're, we're aiming to uh, do construction in May. Uh, finishing up at the beginning of June and to hit the planting window in the spring, which essentially runs through June, but we would like to get it done the middle of June. Wonderful. Questions, comments? Not really comment. Uh, wide range had eight people for once, uh, eight firms wanting qu uh, to give us quotes. Yeah, that was We've been only getting like one for each development thing that we've done. Here we had eight, which is a good representation, and it was from 98,000 all the way to 180. 
Uh, so it was a wide range of spectrum. Everyone needs, seems like 10% more all the way up. So it's a good, good situation when you get eight people bidding on something. I'm okay with it. Any comments, any questions? Um, this is the Penny Pack Creek um, downstream from the YMCA uh, in Carson Simpson's Farms property. It's also uh, a location where we have participated with Montgomery County to uh, expand our cross county trail system. So a lot of potential work going on in this area. Okay. It's also paid by the YMCA. Yes. Not taxpayers. So we'll push this forward to May for a full board vote, but in the interest of trying to get it started at the very beginning of May, uh, Cheryl and Nick, are you guys all right with this? I'm, I'm going to start to work with site prep on bonding and contracts and stuff so that, that we can hit the ground running right after you, the full board votes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. That actually concludes our new business items. I'm sorry, Nick. I didn't see you moving there. You asked me to contact Mr. Harry George about the uh, <coughs> pump grinder. Uh, situation oh, yeah the, manor has. the meeting's not over we're just stopping on it you can talk about that okay, now doing business right? I, I i asked uh uh nick to contact the uh residents that have been coming to this meeting regularly trying to get their uh, sewer system expanded and uh we went back and forth we had several there was a, a two different quotes that they were given from the sewer authority on uh, cost and that was that was all we heard so i wanted to revisit it tonight Mm -hmm. so what do you got so uh, I, I talked to mr. George this morning he said uh, they're deadlocked because uh, the people that are, are interested are not willing to pay forty five thousand uh, dollars for this work they can't afford it and one of the homeowners they they, they couldn't reach at all um, and the other thing was that the uh, it's going to require the uh, residents to, to maintain the system and they thought that was that was unreasonable also um, okay so we need to get more information on that we, we've been uh, back and forth with the sewer authority on this mm -hmm. but maintaining a system I don't know what that means like if if you have a grinder pump that's that's discharging to uh, a sanitary sewer systems and municipal at, at, you know the sewer authority owns I'm okay with you maintaining your own grinder pump and, and your pipe out to the right away like everybody else has to. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're talking about maintaining the 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 trunk line or the, or the sewer main in the street, I yeah, I have a problem with that. Right. And, and we we've been well, back and forth with the sewer authority on that. But the the, the sewer main is down on uh, uh, on Inman Terrace, right? So. I'm trying to understand. I'm with you. I'm trying to understand what they what they would have to be so, responsible for. We had two different quotes to connect the system. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't, it, there is no main in front of these homes. Right, exactly. And, and there's a lot of rock, that's why there's no main. Uh, so they, they had gotten like estimations about what it would cost. And I don't remember if the 45,000 was for uh, a conventional gravity system mm -hmm. or if they wanted to pay that much money for uh, an injection pump system. I don't know. Yeah, well. Uh, the but, September 19th meeting, page 122 to 124. <laughs> so is that what that document yeah. is? So the cat's out of the bag here. You know, like as far as you have a failing sanitary system, it, and it, it goes beyond us. It's it's the county oversees sure. that, right? Um, well, he and, felt he's just going to wait till he has to sell his house and deal with the problem then. But he doesn't want to spend $45,000. I don't know if that's the exact figure. Um, um, I mean, there's different ways to finance it, you know, and, and the county right. can well, assist with that. There's liens on properties and those things happen. You know, we, we have this kind of problem and we have the problem with everybody has failing sidewalks. And how can we make it, you know, 90% of the people in the township redo their sidewalks? Uh, but maybe there's a way we can establish a fund um, 
uh, that people could borrow against at low interest and pay it back over you know 20 years or something. Um, just a thought to solve these kinds of problems. I'm just put that out there. Yeah, well, we have a system in place. We lean the properties. Right. Yeah, right. You know, sidewalks, existing sewers, things like that. But this is new construction. That's and, true. And if, it, if it's becomes, you know, a risk to the community because the systems are failing, they're going to have to do something. Oh, yeah, I agree. And I don't know um, if there's action from the board, if there's a violation by the county. Would you know that? If, if the system was failing, uh, their, their own lot system was failing, um, the, the, generally the county health department would reach out to my office. Um, I have not heard from them. Right. Well, the I think they've been there, though. I think they've been there. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't disagree, but um, the, the property owner actually provided us with the information. Right. right. Yeah, there wasn't a complaint that went out. Right. Mm -hmm. DP's not going to come in and just do it because they heard it at a meeting but you know there's been enough discussion and public knowledge that people can't deny it mm -hmm. uh okay well um you know they have the information and just keep me tuned in yeah okay um, um yeah so i think there was no will to, to go any further i will uh, follow up with the sewer authority about what they're talking about as far as maintaining great because i think we got that pretty much crystal clear Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you agree you. with that? I agree with maintaining it uh, for theirs. But if you start doing something for them, we we didn't do anything for Penny Pack. We didn't do anything for Betts uh, or Woodlawn. They all came in and had to have their own redone. So what we did at Penny Pack was approve it. Now the sewer authority agreed that as soon as the second line was applied to that uh, main in the street, then they would take it over. Or they would accept dedication. They took it all the way back to? 540 feet of frontage on Pennypack Road. And they only had to go to the first sewer thing. It was over 500 feet of drilling. And then, so they, they had frontage across other properties. And, and if someone else wants to hook up, that sewer means there. Right. So right now, it's only a single home. Is that how everybody else remembers it? That's, that's how I re remember Penny Pack. The homeowner paid to put in the entire lateral, but it, the common portion or the portion within the right of way is large enough to be extended. And if it were to ever be extended, then the authority would have to take ownership of it. DEP would require that because DEP doesn't want multiple homes on a common pipe in the street owned by anyone other than a, a government right. entity. We took less money for the property. It was our property. She held on to it. <laughs> I'm very, <laughs> very well versed in what happened. <laughs> okay. And uh, what was the one at Woodlawn? That was an existing grinder pump that was redone. That was, yes. They had to go across somebody else's property. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was in the first block downhill from... I remember, uh, yeah. That, that was be before... Uh, yeah, we tried to get the sewer authority to assume that one, too, and they wanted... Yes. Uh, and then... Okay. All right. And the other one that failed was Betts Road. That was another one. Uh, we got the contractor to do it that did the extra put in the house there to do it for the property. I don't think that was, a, was that an injection pump or was that a... I don't know. I don't think it was a gravity, but I'm not sure. Okay. So the new property is off of Betts Road. Uh, right, right. Yeah, they are... Um, that, that will be a private line. Yeah. And that's not in the right-of-way. That's in the rear yards, right? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, it is they are, they are each property they're they're uh, just they have grinder pumps and they're oh they do yeah, yeah. and they are um, pushing it to a common main that the sewer authorities taking 
dedication of it in the right way. Oh, okay, great. That's why we'd like to see it happen. And as, as Jim was saying, right, the, the DEP would not entertain two houses with a private line in, in the right of way for a sanitary. Just saying, it's not the only place. <laughs> I, I understand that. I know you do. <laughs> okay. Any other new business items? Okay. Moving right along, we are done with new business. Acceptance and approval of monthly reports. Mr. Bertel. Yes, uh, th thank you. Uh Mr. Chairman, uh, the committee has my March 2023 report as a comparison. I've included the March 2022 monthly report. Um, I have nothing further to add. Um, happy to answer any questions the committee may have. You good? I'm good. Public, commissioners, thank you, Paul. Mr. L. Sear, you're not getting off that easy. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Um, you have my March 2023 um, public works notes and um, sanitation summary. Uh, I have nothing further to add, but we'll gladly answer any questions. Okay. Um, so we've had a open discussion about automated trash and trucks and trash cans. So I, I, I'm perfectly fine with the direction we're going right now, except for we do realize that when you get trash cans and you use exi existing tippers on the back of the truck, you're not reducing manpower. Correct. I understand that. Uh, there was a we'll reduce workman's comp. Guys, I'm sure. Do? I'm sure. Uh, uh, and I, I did reach out to Dibbit to ask them, you know, about that too, uh, about what they see in the industry, not about us specifically. Um, but. There's a lot of concern on this board and throughout the community that we certainly have enough uh, long term. We have the manpower or, or the personnel, uh, you know, to make sure that all the snow equipment goes out when we have a big snow event. And ultimately, when we have, let's say, two trucks that are fully automated in cans throughout the township. What do we look like for, as far as demand for personnel? What can we expect from you as far as how, how many people you need to run your, your department? Sanitation and um, highway and, and uh, you know, picking up leaves and also um, removing snow. Here, here, I guess here's the issue. Um, if we go fully automated in the time frame on replacement of trucks, it's going to be difficult to, I guess, um, through attrition. That's fine. It that just, no, it would just be difficult to do a timing of when we're going to replace a truck. Right. make it fully automated right with a retirement right so th th there's going to be times where that opportunity to hire someone new where we wouldn't right. won't be there that i i, I, I get that, that right? I'm, I'm looking at when you manage your department what is for all those applications 
you know, the way we do business now, make sure the trash is collected, make sure our highways are paved, make sure that the leaves are picked up, right. make sure that the snow is removed. People are happy with the service. Oh, exactly. And the service is going to change. On a normal snowstorm where we plow and saw, we have 19 pieces of equipment that go out. Okay. That's salt spreaders, um, plows, and loader operator. So it's 19. Right. So we would need, you know, we have 19 employees. And taking it in consideration, people who are off on vacation, people right. who are not sick. So that's why when, you know, we were look, uh, Manager Canlin and I were looking at um, what the number would be, right. it would be like two maximum um, throw attrition. They were attrition out, two jobs. Okay. Because that would be, and, and not just that, we could, you know, we can always keep and back and forth with park and rec also, right? So, you know, right now they, they hire m multiple seasonal employees, um, you know, during our slow time. Hard getting them right now. It's hard getting anybody right now. Right. Um, so, you know, winter time, I usually give him, give park and rec a couple of labors Right. during um, the snow during the day so they can shovel and snow flow. Okay. Um, so do it that way. Um, but just timing is, is the difficult thing. So you need 19 men, women to, um, for snow operations. That's guys in the trucks plowing the employees. Right. Um, we still have our foreman that runs the operations. Right. in the office um, and then I usually bring in the other foreman to supervise okay so and that, it's an all call 21 to 20, 20. The, the, the whole main reason for this though what we really started was because of the high uh, injury rate mm -hmm. from the trash I don't think we're not looking to get rid of people. I just want to make clear. No, well, no. But there, it, it could there was happen. certainly, uh, you know, that was part of the decision making process that was used to persuade commissioners to vote in that direction. That we're going to save money on personnel. And indeed we will. But it's it's not a whole lot. Uh, but that's okay. It's, it's actually a direction that, you know, a lot of people are going uh, and We've been very successful with the uh, automated recycling. Yes. As far as picking it up. Not so much with selling the stuff. That's everyone. <laughs> I understand that. It's a crazy market. I was told in the next few months it's supposed to turn around. Okay. That's what I was told. Great. Um, so does anybody else have any questions on this particular topic? I know it's... Uh, it's fresh in everybody's minds, and then there wasn't really a clear message delivered. So I wanted to make sure that we straighten that out. No more? Nope. Okay. Uh, have you gotten anywhere with PennDOT with Newington Drive and the uh, ADA ramp at the corner? Newington, New York. But um, my understanding, there's a project that's going to be going on down that way. That's what I believe so. I'm not sure. But I was looking at that intersection and there it there is a state manhole not too far. Uh, a state inlet? Yeah, just state inlet, right, right south of the um, just south of the driveway at the private driveway. Oh I'm I'm sorry, I'm confused. The other corner that we have issue with. Uh, Marlin and Commerce. Oh yeah, right. That's why. Uh, yeah, I'm, there's one there. That's that's the one I was thinking about because I know we're going to have that project going on. Yeah, there is a project. Right. You just look, you just walked out the door. Right. Not that one. Well, will you, I, that, that one would work. Yeah. Right. But our widening there. Yeah. So no, I haven't spoken to PennDOT about that. Please do. Going to. 
Newington and York, and it's been a couple of years, and uh, all we really need is a, a groove cut in the blacktop to get that water out of there because it sits there and it freezes and it's a mess. Uh, so, yeah, please follow up with that. That's all I have. Um, any other questions? Hey, I, I'm just going to give Dave a uh, one Blair Mill. Somebody's having a problem with some uh, water issues. I think it's actually Horsham problem because it's across from Home Road. I think it's just a buildup of stuff, so the water's rushing across the street. If you could just it, it, look at it, there, take Horsham, but I'll give you the all the stuff that blocks the inlets. We typically get a lot of that. I think it's their side, not ours. But I'll give you the name and the phone number and stuff, and the person. That's all. I'll give it to you afterwards. Okay, we've all seen the report from uh, Public Works. Any anyone have any questions, concerns? Okay, we'll move along. Go right to the engineer's report. Thanks, Kevin. My April 2023 engineer's report's in your packet. Uh, the only thing I really wanted to bring attention to is the work on the municipal complex. We completed the field survey of, of this property and uh, we should be able to set some property corners in the next few weeks. And then we've also been working with KCBA and your township staff to develop a final site plan for the, the police station and uh, associated parking. So that's, uh, that's all I have, but you know, any questions on anything okay, else? So have you and Dave been involved in the, like the, uh, uh, the right of way cut and curb at the uh, driveway across the street? In the federal reality, so we, they're done. Yeah, that work got done. I, I just I drove in there right before I came here. Yeah, it's once you get in there, it's a bit of a maze, but yeah, you can get in okay. It's like a mouse trap in there. Yeah. yeah all, all, Commissioner, all that work was ever seen by uh, Brian DeSalt or, or one of his uh, inspectors from from Gilmore Associates. Right. And we recently approved a. a essentially a field change plan, but a final design of the curb ramps that will be on your side of that project to receive the crosswalks that they're putting in across Park Avenue and then a new one across your driveway as well. So did we, uh, as far as the site work here, we're not there yet as far as deciding on two-way traffic for that entrance on the township complex part yeah that's part of what we'll be working on first uh, we're trying to decide uh, how many parking spaces should be on on this we campus discussion. Um, right now we're, we're leaning towards mimicking almost exactly as many as are on here today because there you know isn't really to my knowledge a deficit of parking right now and uh, even when the police station is built, like you're not, you're just moving employees around between new buildings on the campus. So, you're not adding more employees. And as soon as we get this property zoned town center, we we're applicable for shared park. Y yeah, I mean, you, you you can do whatever you want to do with parking. Uh, Works real well. We just want to make sure <laughs> we we'll make sure you have enough. No, I, I agree. We've had that conversation about we don't want to reduce it. Yes. I got it. I agree. I mean, you could put up a six-story parking garage if you wanted to. <laughs> All right. Uh, with, with, uh, they, One uh, gets the other, right? Thank you. Jim, were you at the last meeting that they had for last week? Did, did They had a meeting last week, supposedly. I made the one before that. They had a meeting last week. KCBA? Yeah. It was with our facilities director, township manager, and, and the architect. Okay, because I had to ask Matt to get a hold of it, because the one I was at two weeks before that, uh, that was all the questions was engineering stuff. Got it. And I asked Matt to make sure you get invited to that meeting, because I'd rather it start now than after we've gotten into it and we've got to change the whole thing. Okay. Well, it, so, I was not at that meeting, but I... I have a feeling that out of that meeting there were some questions and then Matt contacted me and I've been in contact with KCBA. Okay, that's all. Um, 
we've had several conversations about um, the um, Olive Garden, and, and we see they started doing their demo work. That's correct. And is there everything they have is approved? Then they're ready to go. Yes, that's right. Here it'll be done in 180 days. They'll be open. Okay. Uh, for Oaks Basin, we have anything coming back on that? We don't. But I started to. I tried to get quotes for for the structure, and what we've come to find out is that there isn't enough cover over the pipe existing to fit a structure in there with adequate cover to convert it to have uh, either a manhole top or a, an inlet top. So what we're going to have to do is uh, design something that would be almost like a water meter vault. Um, and so the entire top of the structure would have to be visible from the surface. And then rather than and in inlet grate, you'd have like some kind of hatch that you, you would open to get down in. So we're working with uh, precast companies to, to come up with that. But that's not a, those things aren't standard designs where I can just call and say, hey, I want a pen right. by, 10 by 10 box with a M top. So. Uh, OK. Honestly, the, the, the difference between the grade and the top of the pipe is like one foot through that whole area. All right, well, it's important that uh, it is something that's open. It can open up and just the hose goes in and suck it out. It's not, you know, uh, you know. We're, we're in some ways it might be better or may, maybe more functional for what we need it for to, to have it this way. But it's just, it's something that you're going to see. Whereas before I envisioned it as something that all you would see was the manhole lid. Manhole lid. Yeah, that's, that was my thoughts too. Okay. Uh, I, I'd rather see that if there's something we can do, but if, if it's not doable, I understand why not. Okay. Um, you get that? Yep. Okay. Um, you know, another question I have is County Line Road with the, uh, uh, the truck transfer station. Uh, are we moving along there? They're, they have things to get back to us on uh, their, their basin recovery, their, their removal of dirt, uh, their berm and buffer for the, uh, the trail. A lot, a lot of ticket items that are supposed to get done before they go further. I had a phone conversation with the engineer that they were using to put the basin plan together. They had told me that they were anticipating getting ENS approval from the conservation district for just the basin work. Uh, I said after they got that approval that they should send us the plans that were approved by the conservation district and then we could uh, review that as a grading permit and just get them started on the, the, the basin work alone. Um, the other stuff you're talking about, are those conditions of what approval, I guess? Well, it's, it's um, I don't, don't, there are legal issues with it. Um, that it well, I think the, the ENS plan is going to make them remove the, uh, hopefully, make them remove the dirt to the original grade it was before. That's right. We're, we're, I guess to answer your question, it is we're, we're currently looking at our legal options. Okay. Or then you can give us an update later on that. Sure. I mean, uh, yep. okay. Sounds good. Thank you. For all intents and purposes, it's not going well. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that before. From day one. From day one. <laughs> uh, uh, any, any um, Paul or anybody else in the room? You got a question? I, I thought that those faces said I got a. Oh, that was the County Line Road truck transfer station. All the way out by the railroad tracks. It's the one that's the parking all this. I think it's, trailers and stuff. is it 1720? Yeah. by the trail. 1740. 1740. Uh, County Line Road. Yeah. One of the last properties in Upper Moreland Township going that way. The last property. Yeah. 
um, the car wash. They were in here, and, and there were some items that they they uh, circled back to come to revisit. Yeah, I did speak to their attorney uh, last week, and they have nothing new to report. Uh, they're still trying to work through um, work with PennDOT. PennDOT requirements. Up with to see what they're going to have to do to the site um, once they get to that point, um, then they'll come back. Okay. Everything's sort of on hold until they can um, comply with PennDOT's requirements. And Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the engineer's report? So hearing none, we'll move right along. Um, traffic engineer's report. We're Mr. Road Bridge. What do you got? What road? We're Mr. Road Bridge. How is, how is the closing, the, the, the traffic being monitored? And yeah, the, the police have been stationed out at Surrey. A um, lot of residents are complaining. Um, cars coming from County Line um, aren't following the detour. They're going down Surrey, trying to get through the apartments right. with a swim club, and then turning around and speeding back down Surrey again. So there's been complaints. Um, we've put a no outlet sign up and we've um, also today the police put um, one of our sign boards out. I don't know what they put on it, but um, that should be out there working, okay. letting people know that Surrey's not a throw road. I was out there when they first closed it last weekend and uh, a lot of traffic going through Happer down Fulmer and then they, it's impossible to make a left-hand turn from Fulmer onto York Road, so that really backs it up a lot. Uh, and then people start honking the horns. I guess you give out popcorn and hot dogs over there. Um, but I think that's going to be very challenging. I think once, it's been a week, right? So they learned it. So I think another week or two, and then it, I think it should be fine. People will be used to the detour. And who, who gets you up? Is it McMahon getting updates from them? Do you know? Anybody know? Uh, I, oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. No idea? All right. Uh, I can stop in and check weekly. Well, it's, it's just, it's traffic. You know, how, how are we doing with our, our sidewalk it's going down there? Did that stuff go out the bid yet? You know, we, we have a lot of activity that's hand in hand with that. So I don't want to miss a window and I don't want, uh, you know, okay, we're going to open the bridge and then we're going to start doing our sidewalks now. You know, we, we talked about that extensively. I think all the properties have been signed uh, for, the ac for, for the acquisition of it. it. I just, I don't know how we are as far as getting a bid document together. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. So that, that's, that's very important that, that we make sure we coordinate that work properly. Um, other items on the uh, traffic engineer's report. Uh, have a lot of work still to get done on. <coughs> um, that one's actually current enough. So we'll look for an update on the on the Wormus Road sidewalks next month because it, 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 it's on here for the bid documents come back. We had Anton here last month. He answered a lot of these questions. How about this one? Does any, do you have an answer to this one on the uh, Penny Pack Road sidewalk path to uh, like Davisville and Penny Pack, Davisville Terwood and Penny Pack, where we want to put a walkway there? Did we put a plan together for that? Or I think Anton was working on a plan for that, wasn't he, Paul? Yeah, I think weren't they going to coordinate 
Yeah, Anton and I discussed uh, that corner, and uh, I think that it made the most sense for McMahon to just run with it. So I believe he was going to put something together. I didn't really think there was enough of a drainage component for um, my office to be involved. It's mostly all PennDOT permitting. You got something? Yep. Uh, the only other question you brought up for the last 29 months in a row. Uh, if Matt has talked to UPS to right. see if they were interested, if you just pass that along. Okay. Okay. They'd like to con contribute to it because it's going to completely change their business uh, if it's not done before Blair Mill and 611 that we're not even ready for. So. Okay, we will follow up with Matt on that one. Okay. Uh, any other questions, traffic engineers report? Hearing none, I'm going to move on to the to EAC. Let's give somebody. Hello. Um, maybe I need glasses. Um, Pat Stasio said that we actually did end up qualifying as a tree city. Uh, initially, it was no, but then uh, added more details, and I guess we did qualify. Um, we are in the process of getting quotes for a fence for the Outdoor Environmental Education Center. And the question is, once we get those, uh, how do we proceed? What's our next step? So that's over at the library. How many are we talking about? How many fence? So, so the fence would go between the, the library and treasure sign and right. a long treasure sign. Right. So property. and then portion it off in the back of it, right? Like there's two pieces of it. Is it, it have to be completely closed off? No. So then there's there's already a bunch of fence there because all the neighbors have fences in their backyards and then it would be open from the parking lot. Okay. Um, you're going to get three quotes for that? I think so. Yeah. Okay. And how much do you think it's going to cost? Do you have any idea? Our first estimate came in at ten thousand dollars. Okay. Tomorrow we'll get another quote, and um, I've seen it as much as twenty thousand. Okay. Uh, do they have uh, co-stars um, members? That I'm, sh I'm sure mentioned? there's co-stars uh, companies on. Or fence companies on CoStars. But if we if we uh, just get three bids, if you get three bids, and it's less, less than, than the bid threshold, which is twenty thousand plus or minus. It's like twenty. It's like twenty one thousand. A little bit goes up a little. 000. Goes up a little bit every year. So as long as it's less than that, and you get three quotes, three quotes, then they'll be okay. Um, now you could get those three quotes, and you could also find someone on CoStars and right. potentially <clears throat> less than those quotes. So you would want to go with that. But just how get the three quotes, and then we'll go from there. Okay. How? What do we do next? That's our question. Oh, I, I would think that uh, they'd bring them to you guys to. Well, to Matt. Matt will give them yeah. to us. I'm sorry. Everything goes to Matt. Okay. Okay. And then Matt would put it on an agenda, right? Okay, thank you. Um, 
And by that time, we'll have the property line staked out there. So whenever you tell this contractor to go, they'll know where to put it. Okay, great. Sounds good. Um, needless to say, most of our meeting was taken up with planning for the Earth Day Fair, which is coming up April 22nd. All kinds of stuff going to be there. Um, we also continued our discussion about the plastic bag ban. More and more townships around us are implementing it. Um, it seems that one of the questions that was brought up here was enforcement, and it hasn't really been an issue in other townships. Um, the township itself isn't really going around and checking out whether or not places are in compliance. It, instead, citizens are reporting uh, whether or not a place is in compliance, and if it's not, then whatever township personnel are in that area for something else, they can check it out and give them a warning, and then if need be, can uh, find them or however you decide to set up the ordinance, but most of the ordinances, and I sent you another example, and I sent you a couple examples earlier, um, go ahead and do a fine. We with all the plastic bag stuff, I, we've said we're going to look at it once we get our response back. Get what? Once we get our oh. responses back. Okay. All right. All right. Um, let's see. That's, um, I guess that's about it. Uh, so I did attend uh, the EAC meeting this past week. Um, and uh, one of the things that I was concerned about is uh, uh, these batteries that proper disposal of rechargeable batteries that uh, you know we use on uh, portable devices, screwdrivers, drills, grinders, saws, everything's like a ion battery now. And so what can you tell us about proper disposal of that because I think a lot of them are end up in the trash and they don't belong there. That's a matter of trying to educate people because most of places, the big, well, certainly like Home Depot and Lowe's have a take back recycling program. Um, I don't know whether or not ACE does, but uh, Home Depot and Lowe's recycle a number of things. Last I knew they were still doing CFLs as well. Okay. So it's, they it shouldn't be in the trash. Um, it can also, the, um, the Montgomery County hazardous waste events, I'm guessing also take those. I don't believe they do. No? No, okay. that, that's how this really got me screwed up. Was, uh, okay. Uh, I, I will check again with the county, but they, and, and they're very rare. Like they, there's like six or eight of them throughout the year, all right? And they move all over the place, so I'm not saving them up, uh, you know, in one spot for an, a single annual event. I'd like to have some place where we can just drop them off, or you know, what do we do with them at the township, Dave? <laughs> we have like uh, portable drills that we use. How do you get rid of the batteries? He takes them back. And they, they take them back. Yep. Well, they have a box to go there. Yeah, okay. So maybe we, we can publicize that, you know, uh, or even uh, let people know at uh, Earth Day. Okay. Don't throw these batteries in the trash. Uh, there's places that'll take them. Um, we did discuss, there was a lot of discussion about the. Uh, the plastic bag uh, ban, and you know, we've had that publicly here, uh, and I did check with a lot of um, retail places that that have already experiences, like big corporations that have it. Like they, they're not really that concerned. They haven't voiced opposition to it. They're just going to uh, comply with whatever the the local um, regulations are. Uh, you know, if this is such a, a great environmental concept, I don't understand why it's not happening at uh, the state level. 
because the state we're in. <laughs> um, New Jersey, New York, and Delaware have passed state bans. So the entire state? The entire state. Great Britain's talking about doing the entire country. And, and they're in place in the states already? Like, I mean, it's, yes. it's up and running? Yes. Okay. So we will do what, commission, what our president just said is wait for the information to come back and then move forward. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Library report. No, that's Parks and Rec. That's right. I can't just, just I'm off again. On this Historical. Historical Commission, right. Thank you. Getting back and forth, back and forth. Parks and Rec had just broken out. No. You scared me there, Commissioner. No. Hi, Sue Worth Lamana for the Historical Commission. You don't uh, scare you that your... easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, moving on. Um, so there's my report has uh, six items. Most of these you've seen before. I'm really updating you on them. Um, and we'll just continue to do that for a while because we have long-range goals, you know, that lead us to the uh, 250th anniversary of the United States of America. And, uh, you know, we're running out of time. Uh, and to answer a question you, you've asked me before, um, I, I don't know what the county is doing. The county's not responsive to questions. Uh, neither is the Valley Forge group that I had thought might be most connected to the uh, public knowledge side of things, you know, uh, because they would. Um, they haven't responded to emails nor um, phone calls either. So at this point, I don't know what the county is doing, but we said over a year ago that we should be doing things in here in Upper Moreland. So we're still looking uh, forward to how the uh, farmstead is going to be doing its own work uh, in terms of the barn and that uh, some of the things that you've brought up uh, in the past couple of, of weeks to months. And um, one of the things we had considered since reenactment was something that they were doing out there was to look towards reenactors um, for either and or the uh, Battle of Edge Hill and uh, the Battle of Crooked Bullet, we, Billet, sorry. We know that we uh, share that with Hatboro, but um, it's something here that, you know, was all in this area. So we're looking uh, to both of those, something that we might be able to do um, with Hatboro, as a matter of fact. Um, so anything that can be done to move the farmstead project along, we would certainly want to support as, well as the uh, Historical Commission. Um, I did attend the uh, recorder of uh, deeds, uh, Jeannie Sorg's uh, event out at Belmont Hills Library. Uh, it was very good. Um, it was short, uh, but it you know got to the point of how to do deed research. And um, Commissioner Sork uh, um, mentioned that uh, Mayor Sork uh, mentioned that she would be willing to do something very specific uh, here in uh, Upper Moreland. So, in conjunction with the Historical Association, we are still looking towards. Uh, a September event that would be here in this room, um, inviting the members of the uh, inventory, uh, homeowners, business owners that are on the inventory, as well as the community as a whole, to uh, you know, look at their properties from a fresh perspective, um, looking at the people that live there. When we look back at our own records, we realized that it was great work that we did, but um, we started uh, a long time ago. And some of the things that we can do today, we couldn't do back then. So we really need to maybe look more um, consistently at the records that are available now uh, that would give us better information. For instance, we still have not done the three signs that we said we would do that started out as a project from the board uh, and then got uh, a little bit off. When we decided to move it forward ourselves using uh, our budget to do that, uh, we realized some of this, the words on the signs were not as accurate. Some of the um, narrative was not as clear. Um, and we still are having difficulties with dates that are from historical um, statements, but they're not from 
uh, primary records. So we have uh, an 1868, an 1872, an 1877, and uh, that would be on the uh, Willow Grove Methodist Church, uh, the oldest uh, religious uh, building in the uh, township still standing. And uh, we're, we're going to slow it all down and get it right. So we're asking for clarification in that regard. Um, so that's why deed search and deed research is so important to us. I, we think it'll be an, a really wonderful event, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Um, and other than that, we're going to you know, reach out to everyone who is on the uh, inventory, because we realize our owner's update isn't correct either, as people have sold these houses. And we, we really want to make sure that both we as the commission and you as the board overseeing it have the, you know, the right ownership. So that's, that's a project we're going to take up this spring, because that's something that we can get done. Um, and, and finished within a, a reasonable amount of time. Uh, the last one here on number six, uh, a memorandum of understanding has not been signed by uh, the owner of the W, uh, Mr. DiMarzio, Jerry DiMarzio. And he said that he had not received anything to do that. So in order for that sign to be placed on his property, that was where we stood, that he was to have that. Is there any update that I can have on that. Where does that come from? According to uh, Mr. DiMarzio, he had a conversation with um, Mr. Canlin, and the conversation couldn't finish because of something that was going on here, and he did not finish it. I assume, Ms. Ward Romana, that uh, that would eventually come from my office or from the network, but maybe Mr. Schreiber could follow up with. Say okay. See what the whole okay. up is. Yeah, exactly. but, yeah I, we, I we talked to. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So I talked to Mr. Demarzio just the other day, and he had brought that up that he did not have that, and he did want to make sure that you know he passed it through his own legal counsel, and then he'd be happy to have that sign put on his property. So. And he was yeah. away. He just got back. I'm sorry. He was away. He just got back. He yeah. was away for a while. So. Uh, I don't know if Matt tried when he was away or anything, but don't know. We'll start I, there. I, I, yeah, excellent. I caught him at a good time. So you, you talked about. Are you done? You have yes, more. Yes. No. That, okay. No. Cool. Anything uh, else that you want to ask about? Yeah, I ahead. do. I want to ask you about. You said you attended a, a, an event in Belmont Hills with the recorder of deeds. Mm -hmm. Was that of a historical nature also, or is that just like when you ask her to come here? Uh, no, it's historical in nature. That it is something that her office is doing, helping people do deed research on their individual properties throughout the entire county. So she has a program about how you access it, how it works, and what you can do as a homeowner. But understanding that you can, like, teaching people how to use her office, not just necessarily for historical records but also for anything deed related yes that true yeah okay. but but the uh, the point of this one was specifically there was a group of historically interested people in the room so that's where it all went um, okay. she also did something I believe uh, further out mm, not too sure which community where they submitted a group of homes for review and her office was able to take those reviews and, uh, and dive deeply into it so that somebody isn't starting from the initial uh, grantee, grantor statements of a deed, but you know she had already taken it back to uh, the 1800s. So she can customize something here. That's why we're going to get the Historical Association involved and find out what they would like to do with this idea. And I just wanted to bring up to the Historical Association luncheon. Uh, is Tuesday, April 25th. It used to be a dinner. It's now a luncheon. It'll be at the German Club. It's well advertised. I hope uh, there might be a few tickets left. People would be able to come out to that. It's between 1 and 5. Okay. Um, Want to get that on the website, please? Mm -hmm. Already on there? On the website? Mm -hmm. Townships? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I didn't see it. 
Oh, okay. So it's there. I checked I, it today. <laughs> I didn't really look for it, so okay. I, will, I will make sure I do. Good. Uh, Anything else? We good? Uh, I did want to ask you about, you, you talked about a possible reenactment at the farmstead mm -hmm. and in conjunction with Hatboro. Uh, well, if, if it were crooked bill, billet, I always say bullet, sorry. Billet, we uh, would certainly want to think about that. You know, have, have they, you, they lay claim to that particular battle, big time. <laughs> but since we are on the border right there at the farmstead, it would be a you know an intercommunity event, so we'd have to talk about that going. So forward. is that something we should be talking Hopper about, or have you already discussed that with like their? I haven't talked to uh, Millbrook or anyone up there Millbrook. specifically about that, but it came up as an idea that you know family friendly his history is an economic driver. You're going to hear a lot of that said from the, these lips anyway. It's people come to see things, and we saw that when we had that event in the fall, that the spooky meets historical event at the farmstead, that people are interested. That was a great event. Yeah, I was glad that you were, you were there. I appreciate that, both of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any questions for our Star Commission okay, yeah. report? <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm working> <laughs> um, All right, Stalker, dude, we got. <laughs> well, uh, Sue, you mentioned the idea that properties change hands mm -hmm. and uh, and that may have new owners. And it made me think about our, our ordinance says if a property goes up for demolition, then uh, Paul's office learns about it and, and notifies the commission. But I wondered, uh, do you get notified when a property changes hands and it has a historical residence, uh, historical marking or it's on the, on the inventory? And is, is, it, is the homeowner required to you know, uh, uh, let let the new buyer know that. No, we 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 get when a uh, real estate transfer goes through, we just get what the county sends us. Mm -hmm. Since this is a local mm -hmm. registry, it would not be um, identified in county tax records. So you might let people know, and then they'll take their home home off the registry. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we don't want that to happen. Exactly. We want the value of the home to be actually greater uh, because it's on the register. Oh, I and understand. So That's there we go. People, I know you do. You know what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> but to your point, we should probably be asking for some look see into that so mm -hmm. that we have a, a, a process, mm -hmm. a methodology um, of acknowledging. Um, as some people have asked, why is there neon? in the bottom part of the Parkside boarding house in those windows, wouldn't that violate, since that is on the historical inventory, wouldn't that violate uh, the historical um, inventory in terms of, you know, neon lighting? And I didn't have an answer for that off the top of my head, but I understood what they were saying, that there's repurposing and then there's repurposing. We might have had a discussion about that differently had we thought about it from that point of view when all that occurred. So better questions are being asked and so we'll bring them before you and, and we can in, talk about them here. In light of that, I don't think the commission has any, uh, our ordinance has any uh, power to make people do anything in terms of their, mm. they only make suggestions. Uh, y yes and no. <laughs> Yes. I, I don't. I, I mean, you have your regulations, you know, about what is and what isn't. I don't think it's about making people do things. I mean, we, we went down that road. Yeah. Awesome. And I, I think the historical commission and and its inventory should be inviting, yes. and not not restrictive. Well, I, I absolutely agree. But I'm, you know, um, some of our properties have modern storm windows. Um, okay. Yeah, et cetera. Anyway. So yes. We're, I'm, Taking you far. No. <laughs> good, good points. Thank you so much. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so I, I skipped a couple items. Uh, one of them is very important is, is the landscape architect report. Uh, I just want to run down it. Uh, the the key pieces here are is, is the uh, what's going on with the, the planning of the Olive Garden because that's under construction. So are you prepared to talk about that or are you just I was prepared to answer any questions related to engineering or landscape architecture. When we went through my report, I thought that's when you would ask them. Okay. I, but we I, could do it now. I knew they were separate. 
and I wasn't sure. Okay. I know we talked about that. On the agenda last month, they were together. Are they separate yeah. now? Uh, yeah, they kind of are. Okay. So Olive Garden is, is really the hottest topic on, on the... Uh, yeah, well, we had a pre-construction meeting. Uh, the RRLA attended that and gave instructions on kind of what to do once they get to planting, which is towards the end of construction. But So my only question for that is, are we going to experience replanting in the basin at all? N no, there's no work in that existing basin as part of this project. But that is going to be taking the stormwater from that parking lot. There will be a new underground stormwater basin in the Olive Garden parking lot that will eventually drain Overflow. to, yeah, the surface basin. But they're not actually touching anything within the surface basin. That's fine. Good to know that. I wasn't sure. Uh, computer road early on. Um, Everything else is really uh, not. Well, Davisville Road. What can you tell me about four point forty two ninety Davisville Road? Is that the Cloud Ten? Yeah. Car wash. Uh, we did a review from an engineering standpoint, from a RLA standpoint. Also, McMahon did a traffic review. We have a scheduled staff meeting with the applicant on Wednesday. Out of that staff meeting, I would anticipate that they would revise their plans and resubmit and then be on a future CDC agenda, likely June-ish, maybe. Maybe May. May, June. May, June. And, okay. That everything else that's moving along much smoother than the other, other car washes? Correct. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay, uh, and, and that then, hasn't uh, got their fingers in that one yet. <laughs> and then uh, Betts Road, uh, the yeah, the new house. Yeah, this is they had a pre-construction meeting for that. It's just the construction of one one new dwelling, and uh, I mean he has his permit, right, Paul? Correct. Yep. Please. And so it should be moving along. We'll be observing it from a site perspective and. The landscape architecture stuff is just planting of, I think, two new trees along Betts. Yeah. Okay. They actually began construction there. Yeah. Yeah, they're underway. Yeah, they start. It's the the pre-construction meeting was March 24th. Okay. I don't have anything else for that. You have any other questions? Anybody from the audience? Um, and then the other item that I didn't discuss, and we don't have to discuss it now, because I think... The only representative on the meeting on the committee is Matt for the uh, Turnpike Cross County Turnpike Committee, uh, and Matt attends those meetings, right? Yeah, if he's not available, I attend them. But um, I have not been to one since December. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, he'd be the one that have that. Yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot to update us on that right now, but uh, I'm curious to see what happens. Okay. Any visitor comment? Any commissioner comments? Just that I drove through the Grove and I saw the new uh, picnic table with the charging station on it where the fountain used to be. It's yeah. Finally installed. Did you charge your phone there? I was going to get out of the car and walk. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> okay. Um, my comments are addressed to you, my friend. Uh, about uh, comments you made last week about the flags. And uh, I respect your opinion. Uh, and I, I would just like to comment that, uh, you know, you voted against the, uh, the, the pride flag based on uh, not governmental. And that, in my opinion, it is. Uh, because we, in this very same meeting, we appointed... Uh, a member of our community to the human relations commit committee that we uh what is it, the human relations commission that which is very much part of our government and which is an advisory okay that's fine 
That being said, I would like to take an opportunity to initiate another uh, flag raising event for Veterans Day. I don't think we do a good enough job on that. And maybe I could ask you to come back to another meeting in the future with what is the proper flag etiquette for Veterans Day. You're not allowed to put one horizontal on the field of Veterans Stadium or any of them? <laughs> That was just the DOD just announced. No more. So, that, that's a new one. Okay. It's an so old code, but yes. Upper Moreland Township. I, I would beg you to recommend to the board okay. a uh, recognition of Veterans Day. Okay. We do with it at our the, flagpole. Okay. We do it at the park, but we could do it here. So, Appreciate not a problem. Okay. Any other commissioner comments? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much for coming.